Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy right here, Tony, with stories written by a current prisoner. Just check, just kicking it right here with my homeboy, Muhammad, and the Muhammad Onward Project. You know, go ahead and check it out. Hit that subscribe button, and most definitely hit that like button. You, me and my boy right here are fitting the collab once again. You have a prepaid call from an inmate at State Prison in California. Please state your name. Your address. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for you. What up, brother? Hello. How you been? How you doing? Oh, I'm good, uh, man. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, the man with no introduction, Trouble, former Aryan Brotherhood member from Yuba City. Feel free to write him and support this brother. Or if you have questions, he's more than willing to answer it on JPay. He has email access or you can write him through regular mail. So without for, further ado, the platform is yours, brother. All right, fine. Uh, so things have been kind of rough, uh, but I've been trying to get this interview for a while to talk to, talk to these people. Uh, so a lot of people are misunderstood about what happens in the uh, California prison system. It's, it's, it's rife with a lot of violence and corruption and stuff like that. Uh, so my experience has been a lot of violence in prisons stuff like that. You know, I've, I've had my throat cut, stuff like that. I, I have somewhere around maybe 20-something stabbings in my in my record. Uh, about five or six of them are actually listed in my crimes. Uh, so, you know, people don't understand the violence that's associated in some of these prisons. I've had my throat cut. Uh, in 2010, I was a victim of a, of a slashing. They got me four times. Uh, they life flighted me out of Salinas Valley State Prison. Uh, in the process of that, when I had my throat cut, uh, a lot of the staff didn't know how to react. Uh, I actually tried to fight. I, 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 wrapped my, I wrapped my shirt around my neck, and uh, I was attempting to get my own weapon. The dude snuck up on me, and, uh, and I thought we were cool. I didn't know we had a problem. I just talked to the man right before that, and uh, he said everything was good. But he snuck up behind me when I was at another man's cell, and I felt pressure on my throat. And natural instinct is something told me something was wrong. So I spun out of it. Well, when I did that, I saved my own life. Because he went deep enough, he barely, when I spun, he barely missed the, the, the beginning of one vein on one side, your main artery. And he barely skipped over the second one because I spun out of it. Well, when I spun out of it, he got me along, he got me, he just sliced me across the throat, which saved my life because I spun. But he got me along the side of the head, and then I got two hand injuries because he used a razor blade. Uh, so what I did is I backed up about 10 feet, and when I, when I realized I was hurt because there was blood all over the place, I took my shirt off. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I tied it around my shirt. I tied it around my neck, and I told the guy, drop it just do this and he was like trouble you don't want me to drop this I said yes I do drop it so he went and dropped it well there's no cops on the floor watching this you know so what I was going to try to do is make it up to myself and get my own knife but I didn't have that opportunity I was bleeding out so finally when the cops see me when I walked them back over you know because I was trying to make it to myself the cops see me they realized all the blood they panicked they panicked so they hit the alarm and they downed everything. And uh, when the medical staff first responded, a lot of them didn't know what to do because I had my shirt tied around my neck. And they kept on telling me to take it off. And I was like, no, I don't want to take it off because I know I'm going to bleed out. Well, I finally got told the head medical uh, staff right there, I said, get everybody away from me because I'm starting to feel the pressure. And I didn't want to panic because I knew the more you panic, the more you're going to bleed. So when they finally got the shirt off my neck, it just started squirting down. So they put compressions on me, and I don't know why these medical staff are used to it, but they rushed me out. And when I got out to the, uh, to the uh, CTC, which is the main medical facility in, in Salinas, uh, they already had the metal vac waiting for me. So when they cut all my clothes off and put me in the metal vac, uh, they were like, it's going to be all right, it's going to be all right. Well, on the, way, on the way to the chopper, you know, they started asking me, what happened and stuff like that, I really don't know. You know, I can't really tell them. Uh, so, when we get on the copper ride to, uh, and I think it was like San Jose uh, Head Trauma Center, uh, they're laying me on the table and uh, they're asking me, 
do you have any family that you want to contact? And I'm like, no, I can't think any numbers, you know. So uh, they asked me to count from like 10 back. And, uh, well, the prison cover ride, I'd never been in a helicopter ride. Well, on the way there, uh, they, I see something was wrong. Well, it's, the damn door opened up. I guess the door was rattling open. So that, that, was, a, that, was, that was kind of weird to me, but... So they stopped the chopper in the middle of the field. They had to secure the door. But I get to the main hospital, and uh, so they tell me to count back. I don't know we any family to contact. I mean, I don't want to contact my mom. You know, I don't want to tell her what happened. So uh, I, I finally go out, and I spent about three days in the hospital. He almost nicked my uh, windpipe, and he almost got both my jugglers on both sides. So uh, they had me on some breathing apparatus and stuff like that to try to secure it. But what's traumatizing about it is... I wasn't able to tell my family for like a month. They, they didn't realize how close I was to death, man. Uh, you know, it was kind of hard to tell your mom that hey, this is the kind of lifestyle you live and shit. And so when my mom finally didn't find out, she was traumatized by it. She never understood the lifestyle that I lived in here, you know. Uh, I mean, my brothers have told me because my brothers at that time, but when they tell my mom about my lifestyle in here, she doesn't understand it, you know. She just knows I've been doing time since I was 13. So she doesn't understand all the stabbings and stuff that I've done. And she doesn't understand that to, to her, I'm her son. But in life, I'm this guy that had to do a lot of things to survive inside here, you know. And uh, during these last cases where this murder happened, you know, my mom, thought she finally got a good insight into who her son was. And, you know, I'm surprised that she supported me so much. You know, that, that's a pretty hard thing for a mom to sense, that your, that your son's a killer, you know. And, uh, so, I don't want to glorify any of this shit, because this is the kind of stuff that, that I'm tired of being, you know? I'm tired of dealing with the virus. Uh, you know, I got PTSD from when it slashed my throat. Uh, I have stabbings, but to have somebody sneak up on you that you're not expecting it, and to have them slash your throat and you almost die, that's PTSD, you know? We deal with it in here, too. We surround ourselves by bodies. We live by the sword, we die by the sword. You know, I, I'm just tired of it, you know. I'm tired of the violence. I'm tired of being afraid. I still wake up in nightmares. And I, I still go through all that. I don't like people to touch me. I mean, can you imagine somebody that's given up on human contact and stuff like that? It's, it's pretty hard, man. So, but, like, the PTSD I'm still struggling with. I've, I've tried to use the mental health system to deal with it. But, you know, I've, I haven't had no human contact in almost 11 years of any sort, you know, I haven't even been touched by luck with it in 11 years. So, and I don't let none of these people touch me. So, I mean, I want to be a lesson to people that, you know, you think this is all funny games. It's not. I changed my life, but it wasn't easy. I mean, I've had to hurt people to change my life, and that's not right. You know, people need to be more willing to accept the consequences and the, and the repercussions of it of the decisions and stuff, you know? And that's what I'm trying to do now. It's like, I'm tired of hurting people. I'm tired of hurting my mom. I mean, to see her, the way she, the way she looked in that courtroom, I, I told her, I, I'm going to change. But it hasn't been easy, you know? I live on the fringe of violence all the time. You know? That's just the way it is. I mean, these, these people in here, that's the only thing they understand, you know? They will push you to that limit until it happens that way. And that's not who I want to be, you know. I'm just tired of it, you know. Uh, I've been convicted of all these stabbings, and I'm well known in the system for it. But that's not who I am, you know. That's not who I want to be. I want to reach out to people and let them know that, hey, man, I regret the lifestyle I've lived. I do. I really do, you know. Uh, I've been I've been to trial four times uh, over stabbing people, you know. I've been drive-by shootings, you know. Uh, I've been all that, you know, and I have a conscience. It's not who I am. That's not who I want to be. And I just want to reach out to kids and anybody that's want to listen and let them know, that, hey, man, I regret it. I regret it. I regret who I've, who I've become. And I've, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I regret the consequences of my actions, you know. Right now, I, uh, I'm trying to not hurt anybody. That's the promise I made my mom to not give up and not hurt anybody. But 
you gotta understand that it's, it's hard. It's hard, especially when you've never been given the tools to deal with your anger or anything else. You know, and uh, so I'm trying to seek help. You know, uh, I really don't know how what else to say about it. I don't want to glorify anything so anybody gets a misperception that I'm not proud of any of this. You know, it's not who I am, not who I want to be. You know, hopefully uh, I reach somebody with my story. You know, uh, this ain't easy to deal with. You know, so. Uh, yeah, like, like, I don't want to. I don't want anybody to be having the perception that this is glorifying. You know, I don't want to sit here and talk about all my stabbings that I've done and all the violence I've had against me. And I mean, I've been jumped, I've been stabbed, I've been sliced up. I mean, I got marks all over my up and down my body from this stuff. You know, if you were to see pictures of my body, there are scars all over it. You know, this is some of the things I did to myself. You know, and uh, imagine how it is to limit yourself out to these things. You know. Uh, just try to picture it. Just, just think about it, you know? And just imagine, like, looking, like, looking in your mother's eyes, your father's eyes, and, and seeing the pain, you know? It's hard for me even now, you know? And I've been trying to process it, you know? It's not easy. You know, I, I've lost all human contact besides what's in here. And it's, I'm struggling, man. Right? I mean, every day is hard. Every day is hard because I don't want to be here no more. I don't want to be who I am. You know, so I know what I did, you know. I'm here for killing somebody. You know, I'm just tired of it. I've, I've, exhausted, I've exhausted, like, my federal appeal. Uh, my, my hope is uh, my hope is to get the uh, enhancements dropped off. I'm here for uh, second-degree murder, uh, and they brought up all my priors. So I had four other stabbings. So they brought up all those. They gave me 61 to life plus a 26-year jail. But the enhancements in the California uh, penal system are, are real severe. I'm doing more enhancements than I'm doing for the actual crime. I got six, I got 16 years for the second murder, which I deserve. But I got all the rest of that time as enhancements for the crimes that I've already paid for. I mean, I've already I've already done the time for those crimes. But that's they felt free to give me uh, 15 years for each prior stabbing. And then another 26 years for the assault of the uh, victim that I, I that I killed on this crime. So I mean, I I'm just hoping for the answers. Well, I, I just want to go home, you know. Uh, but I know I need to make the changes that they're required because I never want to come back here again. You know, my mom's getting old. You have 60 seconds remaining. Uh, I just like to, I I have I have a, a friend Jennifer that's going through a lot of uh, like health problems right now. I just want to let her know that thank you for helping me stand by me. I really don't have no money. Well, I appreciate it. So, thank you guys for listening to my story. I mean, I'm open for invitations to meet new people, but it's just hard here. All right? Thank you guys.